How are you guys enjoying Chicago? Uh, well, we yeah. just got in oh. last night, but we had a good yeah. dinner. Well, well, if you need it, I have a very comfortable fold-out couch. So if you guys are, <laughs> oh, if you, you guys need a place, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. <laughs> Well, we're going, we don't need roads. Uh, guys, seriously, what an absolute honor. Uh, Mr. Chase, I'm going to start with you. You know, in the first episode of The Sopranos, Tony complains about missing the days that are represented in this. He says, you know, I, I came in at the end. The best days are over. I'm curious how those lines have changed for you, what that movie has done for those lines. Where was your head when you wrote them then? And when you hear them now, how have those lines changed for you? My head when I wrote them then was, um, I was very unsettled by the state of American society at that time. And um, the whole, like the one liner behind The Sopranos was, there's so much disgusting selfishness that even a mobster can't handle it. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's what, how I first got started. Um, and I don't think anything's changed, so. Just kind of flushed out that line a little bit. Well, we actually, know you know, about. it was kind of prescient, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I shouldn't use that word, but it was, yeah, it kind of, yeah, it flushed out in that direction. For sure, for sure. Michael, I think all of us growing up hear our dads talking about work. I always say, like, if I were an actor, which I don't have the talent to be, I could play a roughneck hearing my dad talk about working on the oil rigs growing up. I'm just yeah. kind of curious, like, what you ever overheard him when he would come home from set at the end of the day, what you heard him say casually about Tony that maybe you remembered that you were able to pull into the character? Oh, man. Um, absolutely nothing. He really, he had, he actually had a bookcase in his apartment in New York, that was a fa it would pull out, and that was his office, and he soundproofed it, and he would close this bookcase and lock it. It was like a secret door, and that's where he would do. He would uh, go into that. Yep, that's uh -huh. where he memorized and did everything, <laughs> and you would see nothing. Yeah, I saw no Tony Soprano. Um, Tony Soprano to me was my dad, you know, sitting in his robe in the trailer, eating food, joking around. Like, I, I really never saw anything that was Tony Soprano. That's what was one of the great parts of watching it for the first time was meeting Tony Soprano through the show and falling in love with oh. him through the script and falling in love with Tony through the show. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I got to fall in love with uh, the physical manifestation of my dad, but it, it wasn't my dad. I, I love Tony, um, but I had never met him before watching the show. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. Uh, Alessandro, you know, one of the, the beautiful things about this movie is that it's given weight and substance because of what we know is to come. And there's a certain level of tragedy whenever we see mm -hmm. Tony and Christopher together in a scene. If Dickie knew what was to come, if he found out what Tony would become if he found out that Tony was going to kill his baby boy. What would Dickie say about the events of The Sopranos? Well, I mean, I, Dickie wants Tony the best for Tony. Mm -hmm. He wanted to be a, a basically he wanted to be a good father to him and to be a good parent. And he was just t had no idea how to go about it. And so a lot of the, the humor and the tragedy of the movie is Dickie's like flailing attempt to be this surrogate parent to Tony. So uh, I don't know, maybe he would have blamed it on himself somehow. By the end of the movie, he seems to kind of blame everything on himself and, uh, you know, accept sort of total responsibility for his own life falling apart. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, feeling that even being around Tony is a liability. Um, so, yeah, I mean, w w the way that things end up spiraling down in Tony's life in the, in the series, as, as uh, you guys know it, um, is something that I, I think would have been upsetting to, to Dickie, and, and he, he was trying to uh, find a way of guiding him out of that and, and couldn't really come up with how to do it. That's fascinating. This, this movie is such an interesting study in like the butterfly effect, where like if one small thing had changed, would we have even gotten to Sopranos, which I think is interesting. Um, as we wrap up, there is a, without giving it away, 
there's a, a small quiet moment in this film that makes me feel like I have more clarity about the finale of The Sopranos, which is actually one of my favorite television finales of all time. I think it's brilliant. I'm sort of curious, without giving too much away, how does this film, for each of you, make you look at the final moment of The Sopranos differently? Well, I mean, to me, one of the things I love most about the way that uh, David has written the show and the film is that um, he allows certain ambiguity to exist without needing to be resolved. And I, I mean, just to give you an example, uh, all these scenes between me and Ray Liotta in prison, um, you know, maybe they're real and maybe they're not. And you, the movie doesn't ask the audience to decide about that. And it doesn't need to in order for the story to work. And, and that's kind of how I feel about the end of the series as well. Mr. Chase, am I, am I looking too far into this movie if I watch this movie and go, oh, that's, I, I see answers here. Am I, am I looking for things that aren't really there? No, that's great. I, <clears throat> that's great. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> Michael, do you look at the, the ending any differently? I mean, I, I think I sort of agree kind of with Alessandra. Like, I think this show is about people and feelings sort of change. So... I think this movie gives you more information mm. about all these characters and the world that they grew up in and where they're coming from. And I think that in many ways, um, those feelings just kind of add on to the richness of these characters. So I think there's still an ambiguity because it allows you to decide what fate you think Tony deserves or which one's better or worse or does he deserve the worse one or the better one and I think you still as a viewer can choose to to uh, choose that you know um, but if you feel that if you watch it and you learn new things that's incredible that's awesome. Gentlemen, I cannot tell you how much of an honor this is. Uh, I did not know this was possible, but this movie, some, my favorite, one of my favorite movies this year, somehow makes The Sopranos better, and I didn't even know that that was Great. even Good. possible. So seriously, I really nice appreciate you guys here. taking the time to, to chat with me. Thank Hold out couch in much. Chicago anytime you guys need it. You're welcome to it. <laughs> how about right, guys, tonight? All right, all right, you're, you're welcome to it. You have to spoon with my dog, but beyond that. <laughs> Where we're going, we don't need roads.